Vegetarianism is the practice of abstaining from the consumption of meat, red meat, poultry, seafood, and the flesh of any other animal, and may also include abstention from by-products of animal slaughter. Vegetarianism may be adopted for various reasons. Many people object to eating meat out of respect for sentient life. Such ethical motivations have been codified under various religious beliefs, as well as animal rights advocacy. Other motivations for vegetarianism are health-related, political, environmental, cultural, aesthetic, economic, or personal preference. There are variations of the diet as well. An ovo lacto vegetarian diet includes both eggs and dairy products, an ovo vegetarian diet includes eggs but not dairy products, and a lacto vegetarian diet includes dairy products but not eggs. A vegan diet excludes all animal products, including eggs and dairy. Some vegans also avoid other animal products such as beeswax, leather or silk clothing, and goose fat shoe polish. Packaged and processed foods, such as cakes, cookies, candies, chocolate, yogurt, and marshmallows, often contain unfamiliar animal ingredients, so may be a special concern for vegetarians due to the likelihood of such additions. Often, prior to purchase or consumption, vegetarians will scrutinize products for animal-derived ingredients. Vegetarians' feelings vary with regard to these ingredients. For example, while some vegetarians may be unaware of animal-derived rennet's role in the production of cheese, and may therefore unknowingly consume the product, other vegetarians may not take issue with its consumption. Semi-vegetarian diets consist largely of vegetarian foods but may include fish or poultry, or sometimes other meats, on an infrequent basis. Those with diets containing fish or poultry may define meat only as mammalian flesh and may identify with vegetarianism. A pescatarian diet has been described as, "...fish but no other meat." The common use association between such diets and vegetarianism has led vegetarian groups such as the Vegetarian Society to state that diets containing these ingredients are not vegetarian, because fish and birds are also animals. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The first discovered written use of the term, "...vegetarian", originated in 1839 and refers to what was previously described as a vegetable regimen or diet, for example in print in 1811. Modern dictionaries based on scientific linguistic principles have always explained its origin as an irregular compound of vegetable in the adjectival sense of any plant still common today and the suffix arian in the sense of supporter believer as in humanitarian, but there were amateur attempts, even by a Latin scholar not trained in linguistics, to find other origins of the word. The term was popularized with the foundation of the Vegetarian Society in Manchester in 1847, although it may have appeared in print before 1847. The earliest occurrences of the term seem to be related to Alcott House a school on the north side of Ham Common, London which was opened in July 1838 by James Pierpont Greaves. From 1841, it was known as a Concordium, or Industry Harmony College, from which time the institution began to publish its own pamphlet entitled The Healthian, which provides some of the earliest appearances of the term, "...vegetarian". 
Topic history The earliest record of vegetarianism comes from the 7th century BCE, inculcating tolerance towards all living beings. Parshwanatha and Mahavira, the 23rd and 24th Trithankaras in Jainism respectively revived and advocated Ahimsa and Jain vegetarianism in 8th to 6th century BC, the most comprehensive and strictest form of vegetarianism. Vegetarianism was also practiced in ancient Greece and the earliest reliable evidence for vegetarian theory and practice in Greece dates from the 6th century BC. The Orphics, a religious movement spreading in Greece at that time, also practiced and promoted vegetarianism. Greek teacher Pythagoras, who promoted the altruistic doctrine of metempsychosis, may have practiced vegetarianism, but is also recorded as eating meat. A fictionalized portrayal of Pythagoras appears in Ovid's Metamorphoses, in which he advocates a form of strict vegetarianism. It was through this portrayal that Pythagoras was best known to English speakers throughout the early modern period and, prior to the coinage of the word vegetarianism, vegetarians were referred to in English as Pythagoreans. Vegetarianism was also practiced about six centuries later in another instance 30 BCE to 50 CE in the northern Thracian region by the Moesi tribe who inhabited present-day Serbia and Bulgaria, feeding themselves on honey, milk, and cheese. In Indian culture, vegetarianism has been closely connected with the attitude of non-violence towards animals called ahimsa in India for millennia and was promoted by religious groups and philosophers. The ancient Indian work of Tirukkural explicitly and unambiguously emphasizes shunning meat and non-killing. Chapter 26 of the Tirukkural, particularly couplets 251–260, deals exclusively on vegetarianism or veganism. Among the Hellenes, Egyptians, and others, vegetarianism had medical or ritual purification purposes. Following the Christianization of the Roman Empire in late antiquity, vegetarianism practically disappeared from Europe, as it did elsewhere, except in India. Several orders of monks in medieval Europe restricted or banned the consumption of meat for ascetic reasons, but none of them eschewed fish. Moreover, the medieval definition of fish included such animals as seals, porpoises, dolphins, barnacle geese, puffins, and beavers. Vegetarianism re-emerged during the Renaissance, becoming more widespread in the 19th and 20th centuries. In 1847, the first vegetarian society was founded in the United Kingdom, Germany, the Netherlands, and other countries followed. In 1886, the vegetarian colony Nueva Germania was founded in Paraguay, though its vegetarian aspect would prove short-lived. The International Vegetarian Union, an association of the national societies, was founded in 1908. In the Western world, the popularity of vegetarianism grew during the 20th century as a result of nutritional, ethical, and, more recently, environmental and economic concerns. Varieties <inaudible> 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 There are a number of vegetarian diets that exclude or include various foods Buddhist vegetarianism. Different Buddhist traditions have differing teachings on diet, which may also vary for ordained monks and nuns compared to others. Many interpret the precept, "...not to kill", to require abstinence from meat, but not all. 
In Taiwan, Su vegetarianism excludes not only all animal products but also vegetables in the Allium family, which have the characteristic aroma of onion and garlic, onion, garlic, scallions, leeks, chives, or shallots. Fruitarianism and Jain vegetarianism permit only fruit, nuts, seeds, and other plant matter that can be gathered without harming the plant. Jain vegetarianism also includes dairy. Macrobiotic diets consist mostly of whole grains and beans. Lacto-vegetarianism includes dairy products but not eggs. Ovo-vegetarianism includes eggs but not dairy products. Ovo-lacto-vegetarianism or lacto-ovo-vegetarianism includes animal products such as eggs, milk, and honey. Sattvic diet, also known as yogic diet, a plant-based diet which may also include dairy and honey, but excludes eggs, red lentils, durian, mushrooms, alliums, blue cheeses, fermented foods or sauces, and alcoholic drinks. Coffee, black or green tea, chocolate, nutmeg, and any other type of stimulant including excessively pungent spices are sometimes excluded, as well. Veganism excludes all animal flesh and by-products, such as milk, honey not always, and eggs, as well as items refined or manufactured through any such product, such as animal-tested baking soda or white sugar refined with bone char. Raw veganism includes only fresh and uncooked fruit, nuts, seeds, and vegetables. Food must not be heated above 118 degrees Fahrenheit 48 degrees Celsius to be considered «raw». Usually, raw vegan food is only ever «cooked» with a food dehydrator at low temperatures, within the «ovo» Groups, there are many who refuse to consume fertilized eggs with balut being an extreme example, however, such distinction is typically not specifically addressed. Some vegetarians also avoid products that may use animal ingredients not included in their labels or which use animal products in their manufacturing. For example, sugars that are whitened with bone char, cheeses that use animal rennet enzymes from animal stomach lining, gelatin derived from the collagen inside animal's skin, bones, and connective tissue, some cane sugar, but not beet sugar and beverages such as apple juice and alcohol clarified with gelatin or crushed shellfish and sturgeon, while other vegetarians are unaware of, or do not mind, such ingredients, individuals sometimes label themselves vegetarian while practicing a semi vegetarian diet, as some dictionary definitions describe vegetarianism as sometimes including the consumption of fish, or only include mammalian flesh as part of their definition of meat, while other definitions exclude fish and all animal flesh. In other cases, individuals may describe themselves as flexitarian. These diets may be followed by those who reduce animal flesh consumed as a way of transitioning to a complete vegetarian diet or for health, ethical, environmental, or other reasons. Semi vegetarian diets include Macrobiotic diet consisting mostly of whole grains and beans, but may sometimes include fish. Pescatarianism, which includes fish and possibly other forms of seafood. Poyo pescatarianism, which includes poultry and fish, or white meat only. 
Politarianism, which includes chicken and possibly other poultry, semi-vegetarianism is contested by vegetarian groups, such as the Vegetarian Society, which states that vegetarianism excludes all animal flesh. <laughs> <laughs> Health effects Studies on the health effects of vegetarian diets observe heterogeneous effects on mortality. One review found a decreased overall risk of all-cause mortality, cancer except breast and cardiovascular disease. However, a meta-analysis found lower risk for ischemic heart disease and cancer but no effect on overall mortality or cerebrovascular disease. Possible limitations include varying definitions used of vegetarianism, and the observation of increased risk of lung cancer mortality in those on a vegetarian diet for less than five years. An analysis pooling two large studies found vegetarians in the UK have similar all-cause mortality as meat eaters. An older meta analysis found similar results, only finding decreased mortality in vegetarians, pescatarians, and irregular meat eaters in ischemic heart disease, but not from any other cause. Vegetarian diets have been shown to prevent and treat gallstones, cardiovascular disease, rheumatoid arthritis, dementia, diverticular disease, renal disease, hypertension, osteoporosis cancer, and diabetes, a vegetarian diet which is poorly planned can lead to hyperhomocysteinemia and platelet disorders, this risk may be offset by ensuring sufficient consumption of vitamin B12 and polyunsaturated fatty acids, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and Dietitians of Canada have stated that at all stages of life, a properly planned vegetarian diet is healthful, nutritionally adequate, and provides health benefits in the prevention and treatment of certain diseases." Large-scale studies have shown that mortality from ischemic heart disease was 30% lower among vegetarian men and 20% lower among vegetarian women than in non-vegetarians. Vegetarian diets offer lower levels of saturated fat, cholesterol and animal protein, and higher levels of carbohydrates, fiber, magnesium, potassium, folate, and antioxidants such as vitamins C and E and phytochemicals. Vegetarian diets can meet guidelines for the treatment of diabetes and some research suggests that diets that are more plant-based reduce risk of type 2 diabetes. Rates of self-reported Seventh-day Adventists were less than half of those of the general population, and, among SDA, vegetarians had lower rates of diabetes than non-vegetarians. Among possible explanations for a protective effect of vegetarian diet are the lower BMI of vegetarians and higher fiber intake, both of which improve insulin sensitivity. The relationship between vegetarian diet and bone health remains unclear. According to some studies, a vegetarian lifestyle can be associated with vitamin B12 deficiency and low bone mineral density. However, a study of vegetarian and non-vegetarian adults in Taiwan found no significant difference in bone mineral density between the two groups. 
Other studies, exploring animal proteins' negative effects on bone health, suggest that vegetarians may be less prone to osteoporosis than omnivores, as vegetarian subjects had greater bone mineral density and more bone formation. The China Cornell Oxford Project, a 20 year study conducted by Cornell University, the University of Oxford, and the Government of China, has established a correlation between the consumption of animal products and a variety of chronic illnesses, such as coronary heart disease, diabetes, and cancers of the breast, prostate and bowel see the China study, a British study of almost 10,000 men found that those who gave up meat were almost twice as likely to suffer from depression as people on a conventional balanced diet. The study found that the 350 committed vegetarians studied had a higher average depression score compared to others. A vegetarian diet may help reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease, as the most important dietary link to Alzheimer's disease appears to be meat consumption, with eggs and high-fat dairy also contributing. Topic. Nutrition Western vegetarian diets are typically high in carotenoids, but relatively low in omega-3 fatty acids and vitamin B12. Vegans can have particularly low intake of vitamin B and calcium if they do not eat enough items such as collard greens, leafy greens, tempeh and tofu soy. High levels of dietary fiber, folic acid, vitamins C and E, and magnesium, and low consumption of saturated fat are all considered to be beneficial aspects of a vegetarian diet. A well-planned vegetarian diet will provide all nutrients in a meat-eater's diet to the same level for all stages of life. Topic. Protein Protein intake in vegetarian diets is lower than in meat diets but can meet the daily requirements for most people. Studies at Harvard University as well as other studies conducted in the United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, New Zealand and various European countries Confirmed vegetarian diets provide sufficient protein intake as long as a variety of plant sources are available and consumed. Pumpkin seeds, peanut butter, hemp seed, almonds, pistachio nuts, flaxseed, tofu, oats, soybeans, walnuts, are great sources of protein for vegetarians. Proteins are composed of amino acids, and a common concern with protein acquired from vegetable sources is an adequate intake of the essential amino acids, which cannot be synthesized by the human body. While dairy and egg products provide complete sources for ovo-lacto-vegetarian, several vegetable sources have significant amounts of all eight types of essential amino acids, including lupin beans, soy, hemp seed, chia seed, amaranth, buckwheat, pumpkin seeds spirulina, pistachios, and quinoa. However, the essential amino acids can also be obtained by eating a variety of complementary plant sources that, in combination, provide all eight essential amino acids e.g. brown rice and beans, or hummus and pitta, though protein combining in the same meal is not necessary. A 1994 study found a varied intake of such sources can be adequate. Topic. Iron 
Vegetarian diets typically contain similar levels of iron to non-vegetarian diets, but this has lower bioavailability than iron from meat sources, and its absorption can sometimes be inhibited by other dietary constituents. According to the Vegetarian Resource Group, consuming food that contains vitamin C, such as citrus fruit or juices, tomatoes, or broccoli, is a good way to increase the amount of iron absorbed at a meal. Vegetarian foods rich in iron include black beans, cashews, hemp seed, kidney beans, broccoli, lentils, oatmeal, raisins, spinach, cabbage, lettuce, black-eyed peas, soybeans, many breakfast cereals, sunflower seeds, chickpeas, tomato juice, tempeh, molasses, thyme, and whole wheat bread. The related vegan diets can often be higher in iron than vegetarian diets, because dairy products are low in iron. Iron stores often tend to be lower in vegetarians than non-vegetarians, and a few small studies report very high rates of iron deficiency up to 40%, and 58% of the respective vegetarian or vegan groups. However, the American Dietetic Association states that iron deficiency is no more common in vegetarians than non vegetarians. Adult males are rarely iron deficient. Iron deficiency anemia is rare no matter the diet. <laughs> Vitamin B12 According to the United States National Institutes of Health, vitamin B12 is not generally present in plants and is naturally found in foods of animal origin. Lacto-ovo vegetarians can obtain B12 from dairy products and eggs, and vegans can obtain it from fortified foods including some soy products and some breakfast cereals and dietary supplements. Vitamin B12 can also be obtained from fortified yeast extract products. The recommended dietary allowance of B12 in the United States is per day 0.4 mcg 0 to 6 months, rising to 1.8 mcg 9 to 13 years, 2.4 mcg 14 plus years, and 2.8 mcg lactating female. While the body's daily requirement for vitamin B12 is very small, deficiency of the vitamin is very serious leading to anemia and irreversible nerve damage. <laughs> <laughs> Fatty acids Plant-based, or vegetarian, sources of omega-3 fatty acids include soy, walnuts, pumpkin seeds, canola oil, kiwi fruit, hemp seed, algae, chia seed, flaxseed, echium seed and leafy vegetables such as lettuce, spinach, cabbage and purslane. Purslane contains more omega-3 than any other known leafy green. Olives and olive oil are another important plant source of unsaturated fatty acids. Plant foods can provide alpha-linolenic acid which the human body uses to synthesize the long-chain N3 fatty acids EPA and DHA. EPA and DHA can be obtained directly in high amounts from oily fish or fish oils. Vegetarians, and particularly vegans, have lower levels of EPA and DHA than meat eaters. While the health effects of low levels of EPA and DHA are unknown, it is unlikely that supplementation with alpha-linolenic acid will significantly increase levels. Recently, some companies have begun to market vegetarian DHA supplements containing seaweed extracts. Whole seaweeds are not suitable for supplementation because their high iodine content limits the amount that may be safely consumed. 
However, certain algae such as spirulina are good sources of gamma-linolenic acid GLA, alpha-linolenic acid ALA, linoleic acid LA, stearidonic acid SDA, icosapentaenoic acid EPA, docosahexanoic acid DHA, and arachidonic acid AA. Topic: Calcium. Calcium intake in vegetarians and vegans can be similar to non-vegetarians, as long as the diet is properly planned. Lacto-ovo vegetarians that include dairy products can still obtain calcium from dairy sources like milk, yogurt, and cheese. Non-dairy milks that are fortified with calcium, such as soy milk and almond milk, can also contribute a significant amount of calcium in the diet. The calcium found in broccoli, bok choy, and kale have also been found to have calcium that is well absorbed in the body. Though the calcium content per serving is lower in these vegetables than a glass of milk, the absorption of the calcium into the body is higher. Other foods that contain calcium include calcium set tofu, blackstrap molasses, turnip greens, mustard greens, soybeans, tempeh, almonds, okra, dried figs, and tahini. Though calcium can be found in spinach, Swiss chard, beans and beet greens, they are generally not considered to be a good source since the calcium binds to oxalic acid and is poorly absorbed into the body. Phytic acid found in nuts, seeds, and beans may also impact calcium absorption rates. See the National Institutes of Health Office of Dietary Supplements for calcium needs for various ages, the Vegetarian Resource Group and the Vegetarian Nutrition Calcium Fact Sheet from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics for more specifics on how to obtain adequate calcium intake on a vegetarian or vegan diet. Topic. Vitamin D Vitamin D needs can be met via the human body's own generation upon sufficient and sensible exposure to ultraviolet UV light in sunlight. Products including milk, soy milk and cereal grains may be fortified to provide a source of vitamin D for those who do not get adequate sun exposure or food sources. Vitamin D supplementation may be necessary. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Vitamin D2 Plants Alfalfa Medicago sativa subsp. Sativa, shoot, 4.8 micrograms 192 U Vitamin D2, 0 0.1 micrograms 4 U Vitamin D3 Fungus, from USDA Nutrient Database, Mushrooms, Portabella, exposed to ultraviolet light, raw, vitamin D2, 11.2 micrograms 446 U. Mushrooms, Portabella, exposed to ultraviolet light, grilled, vitamin D2, 13.1 micrograms 524 U. Mushrooms, shiitake, dried, vitamin D2, 3.9 micrograms, 154 U. Mushrooms, shiitake, raw, vitamin D2, 0 0.4 micrograms, 18 U. Mushrooms, portabella, raw, vitamin D2, 0 0.3 micrograms, 10 U. 
mushroom powder, any species, illuminated with sunlight or artificial ultraviolet light sources vitamin D2, or ergocalciferol is found in fungus except alfalfa which is a plantae, and created from veosterol, which in turn is created when ultraviolet light activates ergosterol which is found in fungi and named as a sterol from ergot. Any UV irradiated fungus including yeast form vitamin D2. Human bioavailability of vitamin D2 from vitamin D2 enhanced button mushrooms via UVB irradiation is effective in improving vitamin D status and not different from a vitamin D2 supplement according to study. For example, vitamin D2 from UV irradiated yeast baked into bread is bioavailable. By visual assessment or using a chromometer, no significant discoloration of irradiated mushrooms, as measured by the degree of whiteness, was observed making it hard to discover if they have been treated without labeling. Claims have been made that a normal serving approx. 3 ounces or 1 half cup, or 60 grams of mushrooms treated with ultraviolet light increase their vitamin D content to levels up to 80 micrograms, or 2700 U if exposed to just 5 minutes of UV light after being harvested. Longevity There have been many comparative and statistical studies of the relationship between diet and longevity, including vegetarianism and longevity. A 1999 Metastudy combined data from five studies from Western countries. The Metastudy reported mortality ratios, where lower numbers indicated fewer deaths, for fish eaters to be 0.82, vegetarians to be 0.84, occasional meat eaters eat meat less than once per week to be 0.84. Regular meat eaters had the base mortality rate of 1.0, while the number for vegans was very uncertain anywhere between 0.7 and 1.44 due to too few data points. The study reported the numbers of deaths in each category, and expected error ranges for each ratio, and adjustments made to the data. However, the Lower mortality was due largely to the relatively low prevalence of smoking in these vegetarian cohorts. Out of the major causes of death studied, only one difference in mortality rate was attributed to the difference in diet, as the conclusion states. Vegetarians had a 24% lower mortality from ischemic heart disease than non-vegetarians, but no associations of a vegetarian diet with other major causes of death were established. In mortality in British vegetarians, a similar conclusion is drawn. British vegetarians have low mortality compared with the general population. Their death rates are similar to those of comparable non-vegetarians, suggesting that much of this benefit may be attributed to non-dietary lifestyle factors such as a low prevalence of smoking and a generally high socio-economic status, or to aspects of the diet other than the avoidance of meat and fish. The Adventist Health Studies is ongoing research that documents the life expectancy in Seventh-day Adventists. This is the only study among others with similar methodology which had favorable indication for vegetarianism. The researchers found that a combination of different lifestyle choices could influence life expectancy by as much as 10 years. 
Among the lifestyle choices investigated, a vegetarian diet was estimated to confer an extra 1 minus 1 half to 2 years of life. The researchers concluded that the life expectancies of California Adventist men and women are higher than those of any other well-described natural population." At 78.5 years for men and 82.3 years for women. The life expectancy of California Adventists surviving to age 30 was 83.3 years for men and 85.7 years for women. The Adventist Health Study is again incorporated into a meta study titled, Does Low Meat Consumption Increase Life Expectancy in Humans? published in American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, which concluded that low meat eating less than once per week and other lifestyle choices significantly increase life expectancy, relative to a group with high meat intake. The study concluded that the findings from one cohort of healthy adults raises the possibility that long-term adherence to a vegetarian diet can further produce a significant 3.6 y increase in life expectancy." However, the study also concluded that some of the variation in the survival advantage in vegetarians may have been due to marked differences between studies in adjustment for confounders, the definition of vegetarian, measurement error, age distribution, the healthy volunteer effect, and intake of specific plant foods by the vegetarians. It further states that this raises the possibility that a low meat, high plant food dietary pattern may be the true causal protective factor rather than simply elimination of meat from the diet. Quote, in a recent review of studies relating low meat diet patterns to all cause mortality, Singh noted that Five out of five studies indicated that adults who followed a low meat, high plant food diet pattern experienced significant or marginally significant decreases in mortality risk relative to other patterns of intake. Statistical studies, such as comparing life expectancy with regional areas and local diets in Europe also have found life expectancy considerably greater in southern France, where a low-meat, high-plant Mediterranean diet is common, than northern France, where a diet with high meat content is more common. A study by the Institute of Preventive and Clinical Medicine an Institute of Physiological Chemistry looked at a group of 19 vegetarians and used as a comparison a group of 19 omnivorous subjects recruited from the same region. The study found that this group of vegetarians have a significantly higher amount of plasma carboxymethylacine and advanced glycation end products ages compared to this group of non-vegetarians. Carboxymethylacine is a glycation product which represents a general marker of oxidative stress and long-term damage of proteins in aging, atherosclerosis and diabetes, and a advanced glycation end products ages may play an important adverse role in process of atherosclerosis, diabetes, aging and chronic renal failure. Heart health Vegetarian diets may lower the risk of heart disease, as well as reduce the need for medications prescribed for chronic illnesses. Arthritis 
Vegetarian diets have been studied to see whether they are of benefit in treating arthritis, but no good supporting evidence has been found. Eating disorders The American Dietetic Association discussed that vegetarian diets may be more common among adolescents with eating disorders, indicating that vegetarian diets do not cause eating disorders, but rather, "...vegetarian diets may be selected to camouflage an existing eating disorder." Ethics and diet Topic <inaudible> <inaudible> General Various ethical reasons have been suggested for choosing vegetarianism, usually predicated on the interests of non-human animals. In many societies, controversy and debate have arisen over the ethics of eating animals. Some people, while not vegetarians, refuse to eat the flesh of certain animals due to cultural taboo, such as cats, dogs, horses or rabbits. Others support meat eating for scientific, nutritional and cultural reasons, including religious ones. Some meat eaters abstain from the meat of animals reared in particular ways, such as factory farms, or avoid certain meats, such as veal or foie gras. Some people follow vegetarian or vegan diets not because of moral concerns involving the raising or consumption of animals in general, but because of concerns about the specific treatment and practices involved in the raising and slaughter of animals, i.e. factory farming and the industrialization of animal slaughter. Others still avoid meat because meat production is claimed to place a greater burden on the environment than production of an equivalent amount of plant protein. Ethical objections based on consideration for animals are generally divided into opposition to the act of killing in general, and opposition to certain agricultural practices surrounding the production of meat. Ethics of killing for food Princeton University professor and animal rights activist Peter Singer believes that if alternative means of survival exist, one ought to choose the option that does not cause unnecessary harm to animals. Most ethical vegetarians argue that the same reasons exist against killing animals in the flesh to eat as against killing humans to eat, especially humans with cognitive abilities equal or lesser than the animals in question. Singer, in his book Animal Liberation, listed possible qualities of sentience in non-human creatures that gave such creatures the scope to be considered under utilitarian ethics, and this has been widely referenced by animal rights campaigners and vegetarians. Ethical vegetarians also believe that killing an animal, like killing a human, especially one who has equal or lesser cognitive abilities than the animals in question, can only be justified in extreme circumstances and that consuming a living creature for its enjoyable taste, convenience, or nutrition value is not a sufficient cause. Another common view is that humans are morally conscious of their behavior in a way other animals are not, and therefore subject to higher standards. One author proposes that denying the right to life and humane treatment to animals with equal or greater cognitive abilities than mentally disabled humans is an arbitrary and discriminatory practice based on habit instead of logic. Opponents of ethical vegetarianism argue that animals are not moral equals to humans and so consider the comparison of eating livestock with killing people to be fallacious. 
This view does not excuse cruelty, but maintains that animals do not possess the rights a human has. <laughs> Dairy and eggs One of the main differences between a vegan and a typical vegetarian diet is the avoidance of both eggs and dairy products such as milk, cheese, butter and yogurt. Ethical vegans do not consume dairy or eggs because they state that their production causes the animal suffering or a premature death. To produce milk from dairy cattle, calves are separated from their mothers soon after birth and slaughtered or fed milk replacer in order to retain the cow's milk for human consumption. Many vegans state that this breaks the natural mother and calf bond. Unwanted male calves are either slaughtered at birth or sent for veal production. To prolong lactation, dairy cows are almost permanently kept pregnant through artificial insemination. After about five years, once the cow's milk production has dropped, she is considered «spent» and sent to slaughter for beef and her hide. A dairy cow's natural life expectancy is about 20 years. In battery cage and free range egg production, unwanted male chicks are culled or discarded at birth during the process of securing a further generation of egg laying hens. <laughs> Treatment of animals Ethical vegetarianism has become popular in developed countries particularly because of the spread of factory farming, faster communications, and environmental consciousness. Some believe that the current mass demand for meat cannot be satisfied without a mass production system that disregards the welfare of animals, while others believe that practices like well-managed free-ranging and consumption of game, particularly from species whose natural predators have been significantly eliminated, could substantially alleviate the demand for mass-produced meat. Classical Greek and Roman philosophy Ancient Greek philosophy has a long tradition of vegetarianism. Pythagoras was reportedly vegetarian and studied at Mount Carmel, where some historians say there was a vegetarian community, as his followers were expected to be. Roman writer Ovid concluded his magnum opus Metamorphoses, in part, with the impassioned argument uttered by the character of Pythagoras that in order for humanity to change, or metamorphose, into a better, more harmonious species, it must strive towards more humane tendencies. He cited vegetarianism as the crucial decision in this metamorphosis, explaining his belief that human life and animal life are so entwined that to kill an animal is virtually the same as killing a fellow human. Everything changes, nothing dies, the soul roams to and fro, now here, now there, and takes what frame it will, passing from beast to man, from our own form to beast and never dies. Therefore lest appetite and greed destroy the bonds of love and duty, heed my message. Abstain. Never by slaughter dispossess souls that are kin and nourish blood with blood. Topic: Religion and diet. Jainism teaches vegetarianism as moral conduct, as do some major sects of Hinduism. Buddhism in general does not prohibit meat eating, while Mahayana Buddhism encourages vegetarianism as beneficial for developing compassion. 
Other denominations that advocate a vegetarian diet include the Seventh Day Adventists, the Rastafari movement, the Ananda Marga movement, and the Hare Krishnas. Sikhism does not equate spirituality with diet and does not specify a vegetarian or meat diet. Bihari faith While there are no dietary restrictions in the Bihari faith, Abdul Baha, the son of the religion's founder, noted that a vegetarian diet consisting of fruits and grains was desirable, except for people with a weak constitution or those that are sick. He stated that there are no requirements that Baha'is become vegetarian, but that a future society should gradually become vegetarian. Abdul Baha also stated that killing animals was contrary to compassion. While Shoghi Effendi, the head of the Bihari faith in the first half of the 20th century, stated that a purely vegetarian diet would be preferable since it avoided killing animals, both he and the Universal House of Justice, the governing body of the Bihari's have stated that these teachings do not constitute a Bihari practice and that Bihari's can choose to eat whatever they wish but should be respectful of others' beliefs. Buddhism Theravadins in general eat meat. If Buddhist monks see, hear or know, a living animal was killed specifically for them to eat, they must refuse it or else incur an offense. However, this does not include eating meat which was given as arms or commercially purchased. In the Theravada canon, Buddha did not make any comment discouraging them from eating meat except specific types, such as human, elephant meat, horse, dog, snake, lion, tiger, leopard, bear, and hyena flesh but he specifically refused to institute vegetarianism in his monastic code when a suggestion had been made. In several Sanskrit texts of Mahayana Buddhism, Buddha instructs his followers to avoid meat. However, each branch of Mahayana Buddhism selects which sutra to follow, and some branches, including the majority of Tibetan and Japanese Buddhists, do eat meat, while many Chinese Buddhist branches do not. Christianity Early Christians disagreed as to whether they should eat meat, and later Christian historians have disagreed over whether Jesus was a vegetarian. Various groups within Christianity have practiced specific dietary restrictions for various reasons. The Council of Jerusalem in around 50 AD, recommended Christians keep following some of the Jewish food laws concerning meat. The early sect known as the Ebionites are considered to have practiced vegetarianism. Surviving fragments from their gospel indicate their belief that, as Christ is the Passover sacrifice and eating the Passover lamb is no longer required, a vegetarian diet may or should be observed. However, Orthodox Christianity does not accept their teaching as authentic. Indeed, their specific injunction to strict vegetarianism was cited as one of the Ebionites' errors. At a much later time, the Bible Christian Church founded by Reverend William Cowherd in 1809 followed a vegetarian diet. Cowherd was one of the philosophical forerunners of the Vegetarian Society. 
Cowherd encouraged members to abstain from eating of meat as a form of temperance. Seventh day Adventists are encouraged to engage in healthy eating practices, and over lacto vegetarian diets are recommended by the General Conference of Seventh day Adventists Nutrition Council. They have also sponsored and participated in many scientific studies exploring the impact of dietary decisions upon health outcomes. The GCNC has in addition adapted the USDA's food pyramid for a vegetarian dietary approach. However, the only kinds of meat specifically frowned upon by the SDA health message are unclean meats, or those forbidden in Scripture. Additionally, some monastic orders follow a vegetarian diet, and members of the Orthodox Church follow a vegan diet during fasts. There is also a strong association between the Quakers and vegetarianism dating back at least to the 18th century. The association grew in prominence during the 19th century, coupled with growing Quaker concerns in connection with alcohol consumption, anti-vivisection and social purity. The association between the Quaker tradition and vegetarianism, however, becomes most significant with the founding of the Friends Vegetarian Society in 1902, "...to spread a kindlier way of living amongst the Society of Friends." According to canon law, Roman Catholics ages 14 and older are required to abstain from meat defined as all mammal and fowl flesh and organs, excluding water animals on Ash Wednesday and all Fridays of Lent including Good Friday. Canon law also obliges Catholics to abstain from meat on the Fridays of the year outside of Lent excluding certain holy days unless, with the permission of the local conference of bishops, another penitential act is substituted. The restrictions on eating meat on these days is solely as an act of penance and not because of a religious objection to eating meat. Topic: Seventh Day Adventist. Since the formation of the Seventh Day Adventist Church in the 1860s, when the church began, wholeness and health have been an emphasis of the Adventist Church, and has been known as the health message belief of the church. Adventists are well known for presenting a health message that recommends vegetarianism and expects adherence to the kosher laws in Leviticus chapter 11. Obedience to these laws means abstinence from pork, shellfish, and other animals prescribed as unclean. The church discourages its members from consuming alcoholic beverages, tobacco or illegal drugs compare Christianity and alcohol. In addition, some Adventists avoid coffee, tea, cola, and other beverages containing caffeine. The pioneers of the Adventist Church had much to do with the common acceptance of breakfast cereals into the Western diet, and the modern commercial concept of cereal food", originated among Adventists. John Harvey Kellogg was one of the early founders of Adventist health work. His development of breakfast cereals as a health food led to the founding of Kellogg's by his brother William. In both Australia and New Zealand, the church-owned Sanitarium Health and Wellbeing Company is a leading manufacturer of health and vegetarian-related products, most prominently wheat bix. Research funded by the U.S. National Institutes of Health has shown that the average Adventist in California lives four to ten years longer than the average Californian. 
The research, as cited by the cover story of the November 2005 issue of National Geographic, asserts that Adventists live longer because they do not smoke or drink alcohol, have a day of rest every week, and maintain a healthy, low-fat vegetarian diet that is rich in nuts and beans. The cohesiveness of Adventist social networks has also been put forward as an explanation for their extended lifespan. Since Dan Butner's 2005 National Geographic story about Adventist longevity, his book, The Blue Zones, Lessons for Living Longer from the People Who've Lived the Longest, named Loma Linda, California a blue zone because of the large concentration of Seventh-day Adventists. He cites the Adventist emphasis on health, diet, and Sabbath keeping as primary factors for Adventist longevity. An estimated 35% of Adventists practice vegetarianism or veganism, according to a 2002 worldwide survey of local church leaders. Hinduism Though there is no strict rule on what to consume and what not to, paths of Hinduism hold vegetarianism as an ideal. Some reasons are, the principle of non-violence applied to animals, the intention to offer only pure vegetarian food to a deity and then to receive it back as prasad, and the conviction that a sattvic diet is beneficial for a healthy body and mind and that non-vegetarian food is not recommended for a better mind and for spiritual development. However, the food habits of Hindus vary according to their community, location, custom and varying traditions. Historically and currently, those Hindus who eat meat prescribe jatka meat. Hindus believe that the cow is a holy animal whose slaughter for meat is forbidden. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Islam. Some followers of Islam or Muslims chose to be vegetarian for health, ethical, or personal reasons. However, the choice to become vegetarian for non-medical reasons can sometimes be controversial due to conflicting fatwas and differing interpretations of the Quran. Though some more traditional Muslims may keep quiet about their vegetarian diet, the number of vegetarian Muslims is increasing. Vegetarianism has been practiced by some influential Muslims, including the Iraqi theologian, female mystic, and poet Rabia of Basra, who died in the year 801, and the Sri Lankan Sufi master Bawa Muhayyadeen, who established the Bawa Muhayyadeen Fellowship of North America in Philadelphia. The former Indian president Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam was also famously a vegetarian. In January 1996, the International Vegetarian Union announced the formation of the Muslim Vegetarian, Vegan Society. Many non vegetarian Muslims will select vegetarian or seafood options when dining in non halal restaurants. However, this is a matter of not having the right kind of meat rather than preferring not to eat meat on the whole. <laughs> Jainism Followers of Jainism believe that all living organisms whether they are microorganism are living and have a soul, and have one or more senses out of five senses and they go to great lengths to minimize any harm to any living organism. 
Most Jains are lacto-vegetarians but more devout Jains do not eat root vegetables because they believe that root vegetables contain a lot more microorganisms as compared to other vegetables, and that, by eating them, violence of these microorganisms is inevitable. So they focus on eating beans and fruits, whose cultivation do not involve killing of a lot of microorganisms. No products obtained from dead animals are allowed, because when a living being dies, a lot of microorganisms called as decomposers will reproduce in the body which decomposes the body, and in eating the dead bodies, violence of decomposers is inevitable. Jain monks usually do a lot of fasting, and when they knew through spiritual powers that their life is very little, they start fasting until death. Some particularly dedicated individuals are fruitarians. Honey is forbidden, because honey is the regurgitation of nectar by bees and may also contain eggs, excreta and dead bees. Some Jains do not consume plant parts that grow underground such as roots and bulbs, because the plants themselves and tiny animals may be killed when the plants are pulled up. <inaudible> Judaism While classical Jewish law neither requires nor prohibits the consumption of meat, Jewish vegetarians often cite Jewish principles regarding animal welfare, environmental ethics, moral character, and health as reasons for adopting a vegetarian or vegan diet. A number of medieval rabbis, e.g., Joseph Albo and Isaac Arama, regard vegetarianism as a moral ideal because the slaughter of animals might cause the individual who performs such acts to develop negative character traits. Many modern rabbis, by contrast, advocate vegetarianism or veganism primarily because of concerns about animal welfare, especially in light of the traditional prohibition on causing unnecessary pain to living creatures. Zarah Barley Hayam, according to Genesis, consumption of meat was prohibited to human beings 30, though Noah was given permission to consume meat after the Great Flood. Some advocates of Jewish vegetarianism, such as Rabbi Abraham Isaac Kook, describe vegetarianism as an eschatological ideal to which all human beings must eventually return. A number of Jewish vegetarian groups and activists promote such ideas and believe that the halakhic permission to eat meat is a temporary leniency for those who are not ready yet to accept the vegetarian diet. For some commentators, such as Rabbi Shlomo Ephraim Lunchetz, the complexity of the laws of sacrifice and slaughter was intended to discourage the consumption of meat and make it less painful for the animals. Jewish vegetarianism and veganism have become especially popular among Israeli Jews. In 2016, Israel was described as the most vegan country on earth", as 5% of its population eschewed all animal products. Interest in veganism has grown among both non-Orthodox and Orthodox Jews in Israel. <laughs> Rastafari Within the Afro-Caribbean community, a minority are Rastafari and follow the dietary regulations with varying degrees of strictness. The most orthodox eat only ital or natural foods, in which the matching of herbs or spices with vegetables is the result of long tradition originating from the African ancestry and cultural heritage of Rastafari. Ital, which is derived from the word vital, means essential to human existence. 
Ital cooking in its strictest form prohibits the use of salt, meat, especially pork, preservatives, colorings, flavorings and anything artificial. Most Rastafari are vegetarian. Topic: <inaudible> Sikhism. The tenets of Sikhism do not advocate a particular stance on either vegetarianism or the consumption of meat, but leave the decision of diet to the individual. The tenth guru, Guru Gobind Singh, however, prohibited Amritdari. Sikhs, or those that follow the Sikh Rehat Mariada the official Sikh code of conduct from eating kutha meat, or meat which has been obtained from animals which have been killed in a ritualistic way. This is understood to have been for the political reason of maintaining independence from the then new Muslim hegemony, as Muslims largely adhere to the ritualistic halal diet Amritdaris". That belong to some Sikh sects, e.g., Akhand Kirtani Jatha, Damdami Taksal, Namdari, and Raranwale, etc., are vehemently against the consumption of meat and eggs, though they do consume and encourage the consumption of milk, butter, and cheese. This vegetarian stance has been traced back to the times of the British Raj, with the advent of many new Vaishnava converts. In response to the varying views on diet throughout the Sikh population, Sikh gurus have sought to clarify the Sikh view on diet, stressing their preference only for simplicity of diet. Guru Nanak said that overconsumption of food lobh, greed, involves a drain on the earth's resources and thus on life. Passages from the Guru Granth Sahib the Holy Book of Sikhs, also known as the Adi Granth say that it is «foolish» to argue for the superiority of animal life, because though all life is related, only human life carries more importance. Only fools argue whether to eat meat or not. Who can define what is meat and what is not meat? Who knows where the sin lies, being a vegetarian or a non-vegetarian?" The Sikh langar, or free temple meal, is largely lacto-vegetarian, though this is understood to be a result of efforts to present a meal that is respectful of the diets of any person who would wish to dine, rather than out a dogma. Topic: Environment and diet. Environmental vegetarianism is based on the concern that the production of meat and animal products for mass consumption, especially through factory farming, is environmentally unsustainable. According to a 2006 United Nations initiative, the livestock industry is one of the largest contributors to environmental degradation worldwide, and modern practices of raising animals for food contribute on a «massive scale» to air and water pollution, land degradation, climate change, and loss of biodiversity. The initiative concluded that the livestock sector emerges as one of the top two or three most significant contributors to the most serious environmental problems, at every scale from local to global. In addition, animal agriculture is a large source of greenhouse gases. According to a 2006 report it is responsible for 18% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions as estimated in 100-year CO2 equivalents. Livestock sources including enteric fermentation and manure account for about 3.1% of U.S. anthropogenic GHG emissions expressed as carbon dioxide equivalents. 
This EPA estimate is based on methodologies agreed to by the Conference of Parties of the UNFCCC, with 100-year global warming potentials from the IPCC Second Assessment Report used in estimating GHG emissions as carbon dioxide equivalents. Meat produced in a laboratory called in vitro meat may be more environmentally sustainable than regularly produced meat. Reactions of vegetarians vary. Rearing a relatively small number of grazing animals can be beneficial, as the Food Climate Research Network at Surrey University reports. A little bit of livestock production is probably a good thing for the environment. In May 2009, Ghent, Belgium, was reported to be the first city in the world to go vegetarian at least once a week. For environmental reasons, when local authorities decided to implement a weekly meatless day, Civil servants would eat vegetarian meals one day per week, in recognition of the United Nations report. Posters were put up by local authorities to encourage the population to take part on vegetarian days, and "'Veggie Street Maps' were printed to highlight vegetarian restaurants. In September 2009, schools in Ghent are due to have a weekly veggie dag, Vegetarian Day. Two, public opinion and acceptance of meat-free food is expected to be more successful if its descriptive words focus less on the health aspects and more on the flavor. Topic Labor conditions and diet Some groups, such as PETA, promote vegetarianism as a way to offset poor treatment and working conditions of workers in the contemporary meat industry. These groups cite studies showing the psychological damage caused by working in the meat industry, especially in factory and industrialized settings, and argue that the meat industry violates its laborers' human rights by assigning difficult and distressing tasks without adequate counseling, training and debriefing. However, the working conditions of agricultural workers as a whole, particularly non-permanent workers, remain poor and well below conditions prevailing in other economic sectors. Accidents, including pesticide poisoning, among farmers and plantation workers contribute to increased health risks, including increased mortality. According to the International Labour Organization, agriculture is one of the three most dangerous jobs in the world. Economics and diet Similar to environmental vegetarianism is the concept of economic vegetarianism. An economic vegetarian is someone who practices vegetarianism from either the philosophical viewpoint concerning issues such as public health and curbing world starvation, the belief that the consumption of meat is economically unsound, part of a conscious simple living strategy or just out of necessity. According to the Worldwatch Institute, massive reductions in meat consumption in industrial nations will ease their health care burden while improving public health. Declining livestock herds will take pressure off rangelands and grainlands, allowing the agricultural resource base to rejuvenate. As populations grow, lowering meat consumption worldwide will allow more efficient use of declining per capita land and water resources, while at the same time making grain more affordable to the world's chronically hungry. Demographics 
prejudice researcher Gordon Hodson observes that vegetarians and vegans frequently face discrimination where eating meat is held as a cultural norm. <laughs> Gender A 1992 market research study conducted by the Yanklovich Research Organization concluded that, of the 12.4 million people in the US who call themselves vegetarian, 68% are female, while only 32% are male. At least one study indicates that vegetarian women are more likely to have female babies. A study of 6,000 pregnant women in 1998 found that while the national average in Britain is 106 boys born to every 100 girls, for vegetarian mothers the ratio was just 85 boys to 100 girls. Catherine Collins of the British Dietetic Association has dismissed this as a «statistical fluke», given that it is actually the male's genetic contribution which determines the sex of a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Country-specific information equals equals see also